Unit 6, Lesson 5. A new way to interpret A over B. Number 1. Select all expressions that equal 3 and 15 hundredths over 45 hundredths. Well, 3 and 15 hundredths over 45 hundredths means 3 and 15 hundredths divided by 45 hundredths. So we can circle B. We can circle C because 3 and 15 hundredths times 1 over 45 hundredths is the same thing as 3 and 15 hundredths over 45 hundredths. 3 and 15 hundredths divided by 45 over 100 is the same thing as 3 and 15 hundredths divided by 45 hundredths. So we can circle D. 3 and 15 hundredths times the reciprocal of 45 hundredths would be E, so we could circle E. Number two, which expressions are solutions to the equation 3 fourths x equals 15? Select all that apply. I selected A and E because they're pretty much the same thing. E says 15 divided by 3 fourths, and that equals 20. And A says 15 divided by 3 fourths, because 15 over 3 fourths means 15 divided by 3 fourths, and that equals 20. I selected C because 4 thirds times 15 is the same as 15 times 4 thirds. And if you notice on A and E, when we divide by 4 thirds, it's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, which is multiplying by 4 thirds, which is what we did for C. So I would select A, C, and E. I also drew a picture of the problem as a diagram below, where all four of the units represent X, each unit has a five on the inside, and the first three out of four units represents three-fourths, or three-fourths of X. And the value of three-fourths of X would be 15, because five plus five plus five equals 15, or 5 times 3 equals 15. You don't need to include this illustration at the bottom, I just put it there to help you better understand it. Number 3. Solve each equation. A. 4x equals 32. Here's a couple illustrations to help you understand how to solve this. The first diagram is a table on the left side of the screen. The column on the left has the number of x's in it, and the column on the right has the number of units. So four X's equals 32 units. To figure out what one X is worth, I needed to divide four by four. That gives me one X. Since I divided the number of X's by four, I need to divide the number of units by four. So 32 divided by four equals eight. So one X equals eight. I also drew a couple hangers. The first hanger shows the hanger balanced with four X's on one side and 32 units on the other. The second hanger shows one X on the left side and eight units on the right side, still in balance, so eight equals X. So once again, four X divided by four equals one X, and 32 divided by four equals eight, so X equals eight. B, four equals 32 X. Directly under this equation, I have a table. And in the left-hand column, I have the x's. On the right-hand column, I have the units. So 32 x's equals four units, or 32 x equals four. To figure out how much one x is worth, I need to divide the number of x's by 32, and that gives me one x. And I also need to divide the other side by 32. So four divided by 32, equals one-eighth. So x equals one-eighth. I also showed it as a hanger. Four units on the left side is in balance with 32 x's on the right hand side. The hanger that has one x on the right hand side is in balance with one-eighth unit. x equals one-eighth. C. 10 x equals 26. So again I have a table with the x's on the left side and the units on the right. 10 X's divided by 10 equals 1 X. Since I divided that column by 10, I have to divide the other column by 10. 26 divided by 10 equals 2 and 6 tenths. So 1 X equals 2 and 6 tenths. The hanger shows in balance 10 X's on the left 
and 26 units on the right. And underneath that, you see a hanger and balance with one X on the left and two and six tenths on the right. X equals two and six tenths. D, 26 equals 100 X. Again, in the table, I have the X's on the left and the units on the right. 100 X's divided by 100 equals one X. I also have to divide the units by 100. 26 divided by 100 equals 26 hundredths. X equals 26 hundredths. I also represent this on the left with a hanger. 26 units is in balance with 100 X's. And below it, 26 hundredths units is in balance with one X. So X equals 26 hundredths. Number four. For each equation, write a story problem represented by the equation. For each equation, state what the quantity x represents. If you get stuck, draw a diagram. 3 fourths plus x equals 2. Well, I did draw a diagram, but first let me read my story. 3 fourths of a dollar plus the price of a drink totals $2. What is the price of the drink? Look on the left-hand side of the diagram. I have four boxes in black. The first box is X'd out. The other three boxes are identified as being three-fourths. In other words, three-fourths of one full unit, with one full unit being represented as four boxes. Next to it, in blue, you see five boxes. That means that it's larger than one full unit. It takes four boxes to make one full unit, and in blue, we have five boxes. And the value of five boxes would be one and one-fourth unit. One and one-fourth unit added to the three-fourths would be worth two full units. Anyway, in this diagram, X represents one and one-fourth, or five out of four. One and five-tenths X equals six. One and a half tickets cost six dollars. How much does one ticket cost? In my diagram, I have three boxes. Each box is worth two. I put two inside each box because two times three equals six, and one and a half tickets cost six dollars. One X has a value of two boxes, or two plus two. So the value for X is four. X equals four. Number five. Write as many mathematical expressions or equations as you can about the image. Include a fraction, a decimal number, or a percentage in each. Well, it says that their fundraiser goal is $250,000, and the image shows that so far they've raised $110,000. $110,000 divided by 250000 is 0 0.44, which is the same as 44 hundredths. They've raised 44%. 110,000 divided by 250,000 is the same as 110 divided by 250. It's also the same as 11 divided by 25. And 11 divided by 25, or 11 25ths, is the same as 44 hundredths. And 44 hundredths is also 44%. 110,000 equals 44% of 250,000. In order to reach their goal, they still need to raise $140,000. And 140,000 divided by 250,000 is 0 0.56 or 56 hundredths. They still need to raise another 56% of their goal in order to reach their goal. Number six. In a lilac paint mixture, 40% of the mixture is white paint 20% is blue, and the rest is red. There are four cups of blue paint used in a batch of lilac paint. A. How many cups of white paint are used? Well, they tell me that blue paint represents 20% of the mixture, and that there's four cups of blue paint. So if you double 20%, you get 40%, and that's the percentage for the white mixture. So we'd also have to double the four cups. If we double four cups, we would get eight cups. So eight cups of white paint would be 40% of the mixture. There are eight cups of white paint used. B, 
How many cups of red paint are used? Well, the rest of it is red. So if there's 40% white, 20% blue, that's a total of 60%. So 100% of the batch minus 60% or minus the blue paint and the white paint, that's going to equal the red paint. So 100% minus 60% equals 40%. 40% would represent eight cups, just like it did with the white paint. My drawing is not to scale, obviously, because the 40% red paint looks a lot smaller than the 40% of white paint. Maybe you could do a better job in your drawing than I did. C. How many cups of lilac paint will this batch yield? Well, if we count up all of the cups, we have four cups plus eight cups plus eight cups, and that totals 20 cups. This batch of lilac paint will yield 20 cups of paint. Number seven, triangle P has a base of 12 inches and a corresponding height of eight inches. Triangle Q has a base of 15 inches and a corresponding height of six and five tenths inches. Which triangle has a greater area? Show your reasoning. Remember the formula for an area of a triangle is half the base times the height. Triangle P, half of 12 times eight equals 48 inches squared. And triangle Q, half of 15 times six and five tenths equals 48 and 75 hundredths inches squared. So triangle Q, has the greatest area with 48 and 75 hundredths inches squared. Congratulations, you have completed Unit 6, Lesson 5, A New Way to Interpret A over B.